Is it possible to turn an existing component into a microservice with almost no effort and without bigger design changes? Yes it is, if this component is an actor of the actor model. Here's my thesis. The challenge with microservices is not to master a particular framework, but to decouple what should be done from when it should be done. The actor model is an architecture where concurrent components communicate via messages only. A design based on messages leads to highly decoupled components with asynchronous communication. In such a design, the location of an actor is not relevant. Actors which can be deployed individually, we can call microservices. Let me prove this thesis by an example. Here's a project based on the actor model. In this code base, the actors are called agents. The orchestrator is a stateful component managing multiple jobs and their states. The data collector is collecting data relevant for processing a job using multiple worker agents to be able to scale with multiple jobs. If you want to know the full background of this project, then watch these two videos later on. Now let's add the missing ingredients to turn those agents into microservices. In the first step we give every agent a name so that we can later locate it using that name. In the next step, we create a class called Agent System, which acts as an agent registry, which we later use to locate agents by name. Now instead of passing references to agents directly, we pass the agent system so that agents can be discovered by name indirectly. In the tests we have to register the agents to the agent system so that those can later be discovered using the name. Let's run the tests and check that everything still works. In the next step we prepare the serialization and deserialization of messages. Therefore we create an agent client proxy which serializes a message and the agent server proxy which deserializes the message. This is an intermediate step. Later on, the client agent proxy of course would discover the endpoint of the actual agent and send the message for example over HTTP. The server agent proxy then would take the HTTP request and convert it into a message and pass it on to the actual agent. In this intermediate step we wire both proxies directly to prove that the serialization works. Now it's time to create a web server which can host an agent. We will use ASP.NET Minimal API for that. Let's factor out the web server into a separate class so that we can use it directly in our test cases in the next step.
we create a generic endpoint which matches the name of an agent. This endpoint accepts HTTP POST requests and converts its payload into a message. Once the actual agent is located, a message will be passed to that agent. At that point we need to define how our system should look like. For that we create a simple configuration which defines where which agent should be hosted. To simplify the whole setup we create the configuration directly in code. Of course this could be later factored out into a configuration file or even a database. When registering a remote agent, we now use the agent client proxy to take care of the remote communication. We use the configuration system of ASP.NET to know which part of the agent system should be hosted in a particular web server. In order to properly host an agent system and its agent in a web server, we need to enhance the lifecycle capabilities of the agent system.
course, we also have to adapt the program CS to make use of the new HTTP agents host. At that point, we realized that we should not rely on the assumption that all agents are already registered to the agent system when one particular agent gets created. So let's fix that. Furthermore, we also have to improve the test API to support remote agents. Finally, we adapt the test case to make use of the HTTP agents host and to test that hosting agents remotely in a web server works as expected. We need to introduce another test API to be able to inject the job observer agent from the test. In the last part, we move the orchestrator and the data collector in a separate process each to make both individually deployable. And that's it! We are now able to host agents in individual processes which can then be deployed anywhere, anytime. And the only design changes needed were an agent registry to discover agents by name, a client and a server proxy to allow sending messages via HTTP, and a web server to support inter-process and inter-machine communication. And also notice that nothing changed in the basic design and architecture of the business logic. All changes were about enhancing the infrastructure for out-of-process communication. The link to this source code you can find in the description below the video, as usual. Of course, we have left out a lot of things we would usually consider in a full microservices-based architecture like error handling and recovery, monitoring, security and many more aspects. So please take this tutorial as a proof of concept only and choose a professional solution for production instead. 
One key precondition for a microservices-based architecture is to reduce coupling between components. And how you can apply automatic governance on component dependencies you will learn in this video.